By the end of this video, you're going to know how to make a Minecraft server for Minecraft 1.19.2 and also how to fix any issues that you might face while trying to run this server. Now, I have to let you know that this server is going to be hosted in your own computer, meaning that it's going to be a local host. So in order for this server to be online, you need to have the server open on your own computer. And while this server could be modded or non-modded, or it could be fabric, it could be vanilla, you do need to have a computer that is capable of running a server. So I do recommend that you have at least four gigabytes of RAM. If you don't know how to check your RAM, you don't really need four gigabytes you could have two maybe but I mean to be running a server you want to have at least four if you don't know how to check your RAM just open your PC click right click and click on properties and as you can see once this thing opens up it tells you right here how many RAM you have I have 32 gigabytes which is really good but if you have 4 8 16 you should be able to do this and also since this server will be hosted in your own computer pretty much the only people that are going to be able to join are those people that you trust enough to give your IP address to because that's the way to join a local hosted server is by giving your address to your friends or the people that you really trust because you don't want to give your IP address to random strangers on the internet because they could use it for bad things so just give it to people you trust and honestly whenever I'm going to play with my friends I make the server myself but whenever I'm going to have a server where I'm going to have like subscribers play or other people play I do make my servers with Minecraft Apex hosting now Minecraft Apex hosting has a lot of advantages like the fact that the server could be open 24 7 because they have a 99.9% .9 of uptime meaning that the servers are on pretty much the whole time and they have a lot of other great advantages like 24 7 customer service the great thing is that you don't have to give away your IP address. You can name the server whatever you want and have people join through there. Something that I really love about Apex Hosting, besides the fact that they give you 25% off if you sign up using the first link in the description, is that you could access the server console through your phone. That means that you could be away from home, you don't have to be on your computer, and you could turn on your server, turn it off, give permissions to people, change the settings, daytime, etc. Do anything that you could do through the server console. So if you want a server for more people to join, completely safe, 24-7 on, you could use Apex Hosting with the first link in the description. But if you still want to make a server using your own computer don't worry because i'm about to teach you how to do that and step number one that you want to do is, is actually to open minecraft open just your regular minecraft launcher and go ahead and launch the latest release 1.19.2 if you already had opened vanilla minecraft once in your computer you don't have to do this step but this is actually done to make sure that you have an instance of minecraft 1.19.2 in your computer you could go ahead and close the game that is just to make sure that you have an actual instance of minecraft 1.19.2 in your computer once you've done that go ahead and click on the second link in the description which will bring you to a written guide on how to actually download and run a server it's very detailed and the guys that run the website are actually really good at this but I'm going to teach you how to do it in this video once you're over here on the guide scroll down until you see download server.jar go ahead and click on that button and that is going to redirect you to the minecraft website the official minecraft.net website and in here we're going to look for a link called download minecraft server 1.19.2 as you can see it's right here now if you are coming here in the future okay if you're watching this months from now there is a chance that minecraft server 1.19.2 jar is not there and you have something like 1.20 or a newer version because this is is just for 1.19.2 as of right now as the moment that is the latest release but in the future this is going to be updated to whatever minecraft version that we have so if you're watching this and you still want to make a server for like 1.20 or 1.19.5 for example you can still follow along this is going to be a newer server in your case anyways once you're over here go ahead and click on minecraft server 1.19.2 jar that is going to start the download for that jar file in my case it's going to ask me where i want to save it but for you it's just going to download now i'm going to go ahead and drop this server file into the desktop once we have the server file in the desktop we want to create a folder to actually put the server on so i'm going to name this i'm going to name this folder light just so you guys don't get lost so we have our like folder you can name the folder whatever you want and we're going to drag and drop our server file into there now we have the jar file inside our like folder or your server folder right anyways once we have this folder created we're like almost ready to start running the server or install the server what we need to do is actually make sure that we have java updated and that is because any minecraft java version above 1.16.5 will require you to actually have java 17 or above meaning that you could have java 17 or Java 18. How do you check your Java version? Don't worry, just click where it says type here to search, type auto remove programs. That is going to bring this up. Go ahead and click on it. And then where it says search this list, just type Java. As you can see, I have Java 18. But what happens if you come here and you have Java 7, Java 8, or not any Java at all? Well, what you're going to do is really simple. Just click on it and click on install. And then just go ahead and confirm. Now, if you don't do this a step and you still want to try and install the server, there is a big, big chance probably 100% that you are going to crash your server and it's not going to open because you actually need to update Java. Like I said, once you don't have any Java in here, as you can see, we don't have any Java. We could proceed to update Java, which is really simple. Go ahead and click on the third link in the description, which will bring you to our written guide on how to download and install Java. Again, great job here in this guide on how to do this with the screenshots and a step-by-step -step guide. But in here, the main thing is to click where it says download Java here. That is going to redirect you over here and we're going to install Java 17. I usually install Java 18, but I want to switch it up now. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to install Java 17. Go ahead and click 
click on Java 7 things once you come over here, scroll down until you find Windows, and then select the XTC4 installer. Go ahead and click on this blue line in here, which is going to start the download for Java 7 things. In my case, it always asks me where I want to save it. That's just a safety that I have activated, but for you, it's just going to download automatically, most likely. Once you have JDK 17 right here, go ahead and drop it into your desktop. And now we're ready to install Java 17, but not before we download Jarfix. As many of you probably know, Jarfix is just an application that updates your jar files, which you're going to need to do once you install Java 17. You need to update this little jar file to run it without any issues. So just click on the fourth link in the description, which will bring you to our written guide again on how to do Jarfix. Once you're over here, just click on this blue button that is going to redirect you over here to the Jarfix website in here. Just click on the blue line that says Jarfix.exe, and that is going to start the download automatically for Jarfix. Go ahead and click on save if you have the same options as me. And once you have Jarfix, go ahead and drop it into your desktop. And now you could even close from all the browsers except this video because you still want to watch it. Now we are ready to start with the installation process. The first thing you want to do is install Java. Go ahead and click on the JDK 17, which is going to start the installation for Java. And when you double click on that Java installation, it's going to prompt you with the administrator sign, allow it to run. And then you're going to get this little thing in here. Click next, next, and just wait for Java 17 to install. It shouldn't be that hard. And it's actually a requirement for any Minecraft above 1.16.5. Anyways, once Java has finished install, you're going to get this little thing in here. Click close and you could even delete the installer. Now we're ready to run the jar fix. Go ahead and double click the jar fix. Once you double click on jar fix, it's going to prompt you with the administrator sign. Go ahead and allow it. And then you're going to get this little sign in here saying that all the jar files in your computer have been updated to Java 17, which is what we want. That's good. Go ahead and click OK on that. And then you could even delete the jar fix. We don't need it anymore. Now we're ready to install the server. Go ahead and open the folder that you created. And in here, you should have the server file. I'm actually going to change the name of this because this is probably how yours look. Probably just looks like this, right? Your file probably just says server. As you can see, what you're going to do in here, you're going to go ahead and double click on it. Just double click on it. And that is going to start extracting files in the folder. As you can see, there's some files just appearing. Once the files stop appearing, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have a ULA file in there, which is this little text document. Go ahead and double click on it to open this text document. And what you're going to do in here is actually change from false to true. Just select the false part and type in true. Do not put any space after it. It should look like this, just ULA equal true. And once you have done that, go ahead and click on file, save, and you can close this. That's it. You don't have to do anything else. Now go ahead and double click on server that jar once again, and that is going to finish running the server. We need to accept the ULA in order to have our Minecraft server connected to the internet later on. As you can see, it says preparing level world is preparing the server is making the world right for for the server. So we just wait for this to finish and I'm going to show you how to join your own server in a moment. Let's just wait for this to finish loading and I'm going to teach you how to do that. Now the server has finished loading and as you can see, it says done. That means as the server is up, we're going to stop it real quick by typing in a stop in the server console and pressing enter. Now the world has a stop and it has closed. And what we're going to do now to join our own server is that we're going to right click on server properties and we're going to click open with and you're going to use notepad in here. Okay. You're going to look for notepad and you're going to use notepad. In my case, I'm going to use notepad plus plus, but you're going to use notepad, the regular notepad, and you're going to scroll down until you find server IP address. As you can see, mine is right here. Server IP line 28 server IP. Once you're in there, you need to add your local IP before address. How do you get your local IP before address? Don't worry. I'm going to show you real quick. Go ahead and click where it says type here to search and type command prompt and then command prompt would show. Go ahead and click on it. And that is going to open the command prompt in here. You're going to type IP config. Go ahead and type IP config just like this. Go ahead and press enter. After you type IP config, you're going to get a lot of numbers and things in here. The only number that you're looking for is for your IP before address, which will be this little line in here. You're just looking for the numbers. You're not looking for any letters. So just go ahead and select those numbers and press Ctrl and C to copy it. And you could even close the command from now and then in the server IP, go ahead and type that number. As you can see, we now have our server IP in our server property file. You could go ahead and click file, save, and then close out from this. Before you do close it though, go ahead and select the IP address again and press Ctrl C again to copy it. And now you could actually close it. Go ahead and launch your server once again. As you can see, the server has loaded. And once the server is loaded, go ahead and open your Minecraft launcher and open your Minecraft game. Once Minecraft has opened, in order to join your server, go ahead and click on multiplayer and then click on add server. Or you could type direct connection, doesn't matter. In this case, I'm going to use the add server option. You can name this whatever you want. Let's name it like again. And then in the server address, you're going to press Ctrl and B to paste that local IP before address. Click on done. and that should add your server. As you can see, it says like down here. We could click on it and that is going to log us into our world. That is going to log us into our server. As you can see, I'm in the server. And if I go to the server console, we could see that I have joined the game. Another way to join your server in case the IP before address doesn't work is by typing local host instead of the number, instead of the IP before address, just type local host, click done, and then add the server that way. But this way, the local host actually doesn't work for me. So I have to use my IP before address. But I know that for many of you, you might join using the local host instead of the 
the IPv4 address. So you're going to try both of them to see which one works. And that is pretty much how to create your own server. But I know that you have a very important question now. And that question is, how do I have my friends join? Because I don't want a server to play by myself, right? Well, you might actually want to do that. I have servers where I just play by myself. But anyways, to have your friends join, you're actually going to need to port forward the server. Port forwarding is a little bit more complicated. And that is why we made an actual guide just to port forward, an actual video that you could watch on how to port forward, which I'm going to be linking on the top right now. And it's going to show at the end of this video. So you could go watch that video, which is a more in-depth guide on how to port forward. Because yeah, if I put it all into one video, it's going to take like half a day. Anyways, you now have a server and you only one step away from port forwarding. Go ahead and watch that video. And as always, bye bye.